Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today I'm going to go over two trades that I did. I did trade Redfin stock, uh, just the company that you see uh, in behind my, uh, my, my, my back screen. Now, uh, Redfin is a uh, company that does, it's in the real estate space, uh, real estate, real estate space. Sorry about that. And the last couple of days has been trending insanely immensely. Like I think it's over a hundred percent in the last like two, three weeks. So it's had a huge move and because that, of that huge move, I felt like it was overextended and it needed a relief pullback. So I was looking for a first red day on that short. Uh, funny because uh, the company's uh, color is actually red. So go figure. That's <laughs> a so, you know, little dad joke. So anyways, um, the other company that I was actually looking at, as well as FSLY or Fastly is a tech company and based in San Francisco, I believe. And uh, there was a, a nice little trend go over in a daily and I was looking for a second day move, a low hanging fruit long uh, on the long side. Uh, and I did trade that as well. And it was really, really nice trade. So I'm going to go over today, those bulk trades. Uh, I'm going to explain to you the daily chart and the intraday and all that kind of good stuff. The entries, the, the levels that I got in, the levels that I got out, all that good stuff. Now, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right, so let's get started on Fastly first. So uh, Fastly actually has a, <clears throat> one of the things that I really like about Fastly now is this huge gap, gap, gap right here. So there's an opportunity for a gap fill right away. So if this is actually wouldn't be a bad swing trade, uh, I'm actually considering it for um, investing in my long-term investment account. It moved from 100 to 120. I mean, that's 20% return on your investment. It's not bad. It's not really that bad at all. So I'm definitely very interested in the stock in my long-term account. Uh, should be a really nice uh, swing trade as well. But I did day trade it today. And the reason why I day traded was because it was happening on daily chart. So yesterday uh, it broke above 100, very important psychological level and a decent amount of volume. Uh, and it broke out of this range. So it was in a continuation play. You know, I felt like there was a, again, because of the gap fill, uh, there's no, there's no resistance over here overhead. There's an opportunity for that move to continue. Uh, not only that, but I also did like um, the, um, the options. Uh, even though there was not a, like a huge amount of volume, uh, the options earlier, uh, it was above uh, close to 100%. Uh, so there was a lot of volatility in the, in, uh, before, uh, well, actually at the open. But now the volatility looks like it's kind of died out because the options do expire today. So that's, that's normal. But there was a lot of volatility at the open, uh, which you know, gave me an indication, hey, there's going to be a move. There's going to be an opportunity for a day trade. So I was looking for a low hanging for long. Uh, again, continuation of that trend. So it pulled back to the midpoint uh, to get in and then to sell it at my, at my uh, two to one risk reward. So pretty much that's exactly what happened. We had a week open and got in at the midpoint. Um, and uh, it literally, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, it reclaimed the volume wave at its price. It went actually, you could say red to green. And I did sell here at the 101.50s. Uh, so that was pretty much it, guys. Uh, it was a smooth trade, so I was very happy about that trade. And it actually continued to trend, and it actually hit the R1 pivot level, which is really nice. So again, guys, overall, I am actually interested in this for a long-term investment as well as a swing trade. There is this huge gap fill opportunity. Um, and now, just to mention, guys, I am not a financial advisor. These videos are all for entertainment and learning purposes. Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay, guys? Uh, this is just my personal thoughts. So that's pretty much it with uh, uh, Fastly FSLY. Now let's look at uh, Redfin. Now this is what I'm talking about, guys. This huge move, literally from like uh, you could say 45 to uh, 77, almost hitting 80, uh, nonstop green day after green day. And if you look at the uh, Bollinger Bands, it is just breaking above that. So I felt like there was going to be a reversal of that, a, a uh, what do you call it, a uh, pullback, a relief pullback. And there was some of it a little bit, but it actually reclaimed and it started to reclaim its trend. So I feel like the first red day is not going to be today. It might be next week sometime. So I also like that Redfin also had a pretty insane uh, implied volatility. I like that as well. 
so some of them has already died down. Uh, but there was an opportunity for short, even though the full first red day type of trade did not occur, there was an opportunity to trade, take some profits. Uh, usually on the first red day, I do like to see the stock being down like 5% to 10% on a day. So right now it is up uh, close to 1%. As I can see, you can see it reclaim. Uh, and when, and when, well, actually, let's look at the, the price action, first of all. So there was this huge trend. Now there's this, there's this nice little trend right here that I was looking at in the five minute chart, just to kind of make it here really quickly. So you guys can kind of see what I was thinking about in this trade. So this nice little trend right here um, has been holding this trend right here. And today it decided to break it. So at the morning, there was not a, there's a lot of, this is the thing about these first red days, especially in stocks that don't have a lot of volume pre-market, you have to kind of wait at least 30 minutes to an hour to see what the price actually tells you. Cause you don't want to short too early because you could get squeezed out because a long-term trend saying that it's going to continue to trend. So that's pretty much what I did because even though at the open, it kind of went red and now this blue line is the previous close. So when it, when the price goes below this, that means it's red. That means it's negative for the day. So it actually kind of opened up uh, a red, but then it had a huge strong open consolidated when kind of red again. So it was kind of, you know, uh, consolidated between red and green, but after like an hour of the market open, it started to consolidate and it started to create kind of these lower high, lower highs and it started to break down below again. So it did kind of break, uh, it did go, ended up going red after this consolidation. So that's what I was looking for. I was looking for some consolidation and get short. Uh, the only thing I can say about this trade, and if I could take it again, um, I think a better entry would have been uh, literally right here, a break of red to green, a break of this uh, level, instead of waiting over here. Because uh, when I first was looking at this trade, I was considering this price section right here, literally just from here. So break of 76, and I think we go red. But after further consolidation, to me, it looked like the break was going to be here at a previous close. So that's the only thing I would have changed. But uh, so for me, it almost looked like I kind of chased a little bit. But to me, confirmation was the midpoint as well. So there was a couple things to kind of look at. Uh, again, I could have done better in terms of my entry, but I still got in and I still made money. At the end of the day, that's what matters. All you could do as a trader is kind of look at your trades and kind of figure out, okay, what could have done different? Where can I make things better in terms of my risk, my entry, my target, all that kind of good stuff. So um I ended up shorting around 76 um, um, below that level. I was waiting for that break of the midpoint. It consolidated and it finally broke below that. I did uh, and ended up taking half below 75, took some profits on that. And I was actually looking for a bigger move. Like I said, I like to see the stock being down five to 10%. And that's what I call a true first red day type of move. And that's what I was looking for. The volatility was there. Some of the volume was there, but it held. It held. So, um, you know, I was actually looking for a target of S1, even farther, even S2 move would, would have been nice. Actually, I would have bought an S2 pounds if that would have happened, but it did it. And that's the reason why risk management is so important, guys. You know, once you take some profits, you got to put your stops and let it ride because these things, especially with the volatility, they could kind of reclaim. And that's pretty much what happened with the Redfin. So once I, I took some profits around the 75 level, that 75 level held. It reclaimed that level and it broke, broke above this level. So I kind of had my stop above the 20, 72.50s. So I, get, I did get stopped out and it continued to, to kind of move up. And it even went green again, if you guys see that. It kind of went green, it pulled back and it reclaimed green and now it's green again. So now it's green and it's trending upward. So these are, uh, you know, that's why it's important to kind of have your stops because Stocks like these can be quite volatile. So you want to get in at the right level, hit your targets, take your profits, you know, raise your stop um, and then let the stock do its thing. Sometimes you will continue to see the sell off and sometimes you won't. And that's exactly what happened with Redfin today. I was still able to make some money out of Redfin, even though the first right day setup didn't quite work out how I wanted to work. Uh, so that was pretty much it on Redfin. Um, to be honest, guys, I think, um, the actual first red day is not going to be until tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, until next week. Um, it looks like the trend is still holding strong. Uh, we might need to see some sort of exhaustion gap up or some exhaustion type of move or blow off candle on the daily chart intraday to kind of, you know, see when will be a better time for a first red day. But 
it's setting up, you know, um, usually stocks can't go up forever. You know, whatever comes up, it must go down, you know, one way or another. Um, so definitely it needs a relief bounce. I mean, excuse me, a relief pullback to kind of keep going up again. So I am looking for uh, another first red day in the future. Uh, and again, a true first red day, the stock usually closes around 5% or 10% uh, red for the day. So today it looks like it, it might not be it. Uh, so that's pretty much it for, for that. Um, so I hope you guys learned something from this video, guys. Uh, again, if you have questions about these trades, don't forget to ask me down below in the YouTube comments. I will answer all your questions. Uh, hey, don't forget to smash that like button. It does help support this channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe. So every time I post a new video, you guys get a chance to uh, be the first one to watch it. Uh, again, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys uh, very soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Have a great weekend.